Uh, this is probably the point where I should just like declare the commencement of a new era or something like that. But um, I basically just decided to take my own advice and just take a bit of a crack at actually rehearsing the uh, segments before actually recording them. And by rehearse I mean just go through the level and sort of work up a game plan with of how I'm actually going to go through it. Um, I did that for this level and I did that for the previous level and I have determined that I can get through both of these in the one segment. Provided I go through it reasonably quickly. It took me about seven, uh, seven or eight minutes to get through this level in the few attempts that I managed to do it in. Uh, aside from the first one which took a little bit longer just because of course my knowledge of this level isn't quite as up to scratch as I thought it was. That's the problematic part with this. Um, thankfully though I did a few uh, practice runs and have determined that my knowledge of this level is now sufficient to the point where I can just record this and the only thing I have to worry about at this point is the commentary which hasn't been too bad so far. But anyways this level is actually a little bit deceiving because aside from that area that had the um, those moving walls and the uh, elasto modes, this level does not offer a whole lot in terms of explorability because this area over here you pretty much have to explore because it nets you the gold key to, that you need to progress further on into this level. Um, so you have to deal with this and this bit is, this is the this is kind of optional but of course you know you kind of got to go for it because of how rewarding it is and in a handful of the practice sessions that I did at this level I entered that room with about less than half of my health so I did really need that um, that uh, healing basin, basin. Still gotta get used to that. But anyways, um, I pretty much know where all the um, missile toting lightning guards are sitting at the moment. So um, obviously one of them was over here. Here we have the gold key, and this is kind of just the big room with the key that's just guarded by a whole bunch of enemies and shit like that. So it's um, just got to keep your eye open for that. But when you go through this level exactly as it, it as it presents itself a few times, you know you just have that knowledge right there. Especially the knowledge of the uh, shrooms mode sitting right there. That might be a bit arsehole but in this case it did absolutely nothing because I already knew he was it was there. Um, and then of course in here, pointless little area. And if we go over here, I, you can go th you can uh, go through this in any which way you want. It doesn't really matter that much. Got to keep a close eye out here because of the high guard there. But again, you have to just assume that there's a high guard there, which I'm pretty sure that's just a randomly generated thing. I can't tell you which of these enemies are randomly generated and which are actually set in stone. I'm not even sure if I've explained the uh, whole point of the random monster generation or anything like that. Maybe I'll like explain it later on in the LP when it, it actually becomes somewhat relevant. So anyways, trigger this touch plate and then there's this uh, power up here. I've netted an elasto mode, which is unfortunate because of this area. That god mode there, I could pick it up right now. I'm not going to bother with it though. Because, um, actually do I want to? Like, if you got a god mode from the random power up out there, it wouldn't matter that much. You'd just be able to make, it would make, it would make the level easier. For now, I'm just going to leave it there and pick it up a little bit later. Um, I believe I want to go in here as well. I think this is kind of optional as well. I'm not entirely sure what this quite kind of purpose this area serves, but it does have a switch which just switches that off. I guess making it easier to traverse the area. Not that it actually matters that much. Um, there's a dog mode in that area which is accessed through dog mode. Uh, might have forgotten about that fellow right there with the missile, um, but that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, wish me luck getting into that, because that might be a bit arsehole -ish. I'll probably go back there when I have the uh, a dog mode or something like that. But for now, it's a bit, ask, a bit of an ask with the amount of health that I have. Uh, thank Unfortunately, you do not fire downwards. Kind of wanted that to happen so that I'd get rid of these idiots. Not like it actually matters because... Uh, there's enemies in these doors, but the doors are locked, and in order to unlock them, you have to trigger a touch plate, which, conveniently enough, is right next to this dog mode. So, all you gotta do is kinda just do that, and you get all the enemies. I've always been able to kill all but one of the enemies in in these uh, practice sessions. It kind of annoys me. 
Like I got, I managed to get them all on one occasion. I think it was the last one I did before the, this recording, which is a bit annoying. But if you if you time it well enough, you can also make this area really easy to navigate. Um, you just have to go through this, and this is another mandatory area because it leads you to the silver key, uh, which you will need to complete the level. Fuck off. And yeah, that's the reason why this le this room can be a bit asshole is just because there are two different ways you can go. It's kind of like a fork path. Um, but regardless of which way, you kind of have no choice but to select one of the uh, poisons to pick. Here, it's entirely irrelevant because you only get a healing basin and a drunk missile. Neither of which are absolutely necessary. Um, but the other one does have the silver key, which you will need. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to go in here because this is optional. And it's me a healing basin, so I guess that's not so bad. Uh, in here, though, is the silver door. And there is a low guard over there. If I can rinse him quickly. Yep, sweet. Uh, yeah, again, reminder. Don't go near bonus barrels when they blow up. Because they will do that sort of shit to you. Anyways, um, I believe I want to, I want to, I want to get the, first I'll take care of that guy. I want to try to time it so that I don't get completely and utterly calcinated, calcinated or something, whatever the hell. I'm going to try to go for the asbestos armor first. Okay, that worked. It's pretty much impossible to avoid taking damage from that, so you just kind of have to deal with it. Oh wait, no, I'm going a bit too far. Uh, here we go. Wanted to pick that up so that I could then go and pick the uh, God boat up and then just sort of save the flame wall for later. And of course the God mode makes mincemeat of this entire room full of enemies. And then if we go back the way we came, we'll go through the silver door and just sort of rinse that area out. another enemy on the other side and then if we go in here two more enemies that area just sort of we're in the we're pretty much in the home stretch because we've just rinsed this room out of enemies there's a whole bunch of boulder traps which are entirely useless here we have the iron key and then if we go over here and jump this area we just rinse these enemies and this god mode will last us to the end of the level because that's the end of the level right there so we went through it reasonably quickly there's not a whole lot of um secret walls here. I believe there's only 12 by my last count. So I've got the flame wall all filled up and ready to go for the next level. The last practice session I actually did of this, I got the skin of your teeth bonus, which I would probably wouldn't want to show off, but in the case that it might fail, because it did when Psychedelic Eyeball tried to show it off. But um, if you finish with one dot of health, uh, you begin the next level with full health. Anyways, uh, this song, again, it played in the fourth door and it had a similar opening like this with a whole bunch of spin blades that go back and forth and slice up enemies. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I've actually explained why the song plays in these particular levels, but the song's name is called Owl, um, which is kind of fitting given the way that the level starts. It just sort of, hey, I've got more enemies, I can just shoot the shit out of them immediately. Oh wait, you can kill them with their own traps without doing anything. Which is kind of nice. Anyways, uh, use the bazooka, warm up some of the food over here. Have I warmed them all up? I believe I have. Okay, so I can go back there for any healing that I need in the future. And there's some more priest porridge in this little pathway here that was blocked off by this plant pot that I just shot up. Now, Tuki return. Um, Pretty much what it says on the tin, there is a gold key door, and then there is a silver key door, and then you need to come back here when you get a key. It's going to start with the silver key first, since I believe you kind of have to, because there's like an area that nets you the gold key that you have to use the silver key in order to get to. So we'll start in this area, sort of just take care of these enemies, and then I've got to get up in here. Oh, that's a... is that a... okay. Yeah, I didn't want to jump in there, only to get rinsed by rockets. Because unlike the previous level, I have I go into this level having beaten the previous one, so everything sort of gets reset. Because like in my last playthrough of this, one of the low guards here was actually a lightning guard. So that was a bit, that might have been a bit of a nuisance, except he didn't have a missile. 
Uh, this area is entirely pointless, but you can at least get out. They do provide you with jump pads to get you out of there. So by my estimate, I should be able to finish up this first episode of the retail game by tomorrow's segment. Um, because the last level of the episode is really, really short, and I don't think that there's much length to Area 6 either, so should be able to take care of that, no problem. Going here first, because I actually forgot about this area, I kind of thought you had to get both of the keys and then come back to this area to take care of something. Um, that wasn't the case at all, you actually have to come here in order to unlock your way to the uh, first area. The first area, well, uh, by which I mean the this area. Now I believe one of these actually is a bit of a trap, so I believe we want to hit that, although it has just switched the um, those things on. Might as well go and switch the other one on, I don't have any reason not to. Because I think one of them like opens up the wall that you need to move open in, in order to actually progress in the level. God. Yeah, that's the arsehole part about those, uh, about those fire shooters. You pretty much can't avoid getting hit by them. Um, thankfully though, of course, like I said before, more priest porridge, so you can just take care of that. So now we can go in here. Oh, wait. Enemies. Okay, now we can go in here. Uh, and just sort of keep a close eye out on any bazooka-toting lightning guards, of which he is not one of them. Um... Oh, hang on. Well and easily taken care of, that wasn't a big deal. Now, this area, it seems dangerous, but it really isn't, because you hit this wall and it's in as best as armor, or better yet, you can just jump over the entire area. And I believe there is a... I could have sworn that one of these bits here was like a secret wall. Yeah, it is. I knew, I, I knew it was. Okay, let's get a nice full flame wall. Um, I might hang on to that for a little bit, because if we go in here, that's where you get the uh, gold key, but I'm going to take a look at this optional area to the left. I'm not entirely sure what purpose this area is supposed to serve, but it's just sort of got this blockade here, which you have to jump over using this jump pad. And I believe there is a bonus barrel here, so let's see what we get in that. More priest porridge. Glorious. And I think there's one other one as well. Yeah, this one over here, which nets me even more priest porridge. Okay, so we have enough health to deal with this area. Um, in before, I just get two rockets shoved up my ass and then I just auto-die. Uh, most pointless secret area ever, because just monk meal. <laughs> monk meal is nothing compared to the copious amounts of priest porridge that I have in this area. Um... And I believe we have another secret wall over here with even more health and even more life items. In case it has been made painfully obvious, all this shit is pointless. Um, oh. Okay. Okay, so that, that gets us into here then. Which means I could just have gone through this way and have been a bit quicker. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, this area is kind of interesting. Um, because there's a whole bunch of enemies in here and if we go up here... Um, we have all this sort of scaffolding-like area and whatnot. Uh, if I can actually get up. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of, like, spear traps and all this sort of jazz, and it's a bit convoluted. Now, there was a life item here. Let's see that if we could actually reach it if it was still there. Uh, no, we can't. Uh, the reason we can't is because we are literally too slow to make the, uh, gaps. That is literally the only reason. If you picked up a faster character, you'd be able to make it across these gaps a little bit easier. Um, I think if you picked up one of the female characters, you'd pretty much be able to get across this that area without any problems whatsoever. I'm not too, too sure how far Teradino can get, um, but I'm not going to go so far as to test that with all of the characters, because seriously, why? Why would I do that? But yeah, that this area was entirely just optional, you don't ever have to go into, into that area, but I figured, of course, kind of have to show it off, um, or else I'd be doing a pretty shitty job with the LP. Not that I hadn't already made that painfully obvious at the previous segment, but whatever. You are entirely useless because, you know, bulletproof armor is god in this game, until such time as you find a fellow with a missile. 
Um, okay, thankfully none of those, these guys are wooden missiles because they're all high guards. But if we head up in here, this is a bit mazy and you kind of got to look out because there are enemies that will drop from the uh, higher areas and we'll probably crush you. Um, I'm hoping that is not the case, but I kind of have to sort of be cautious of that because when we hit this switch, we got to go back the way we came and then it opens up this area which will eventually lead us. Oh, hello. Well, he was going to crush me if I stayed there, so it's a good thing that I moved. But yeah, continue to move through this area, having to deal with enemies and whatnot, and it will eventually lead us to the gold key. And then we got to make our way back out, which can be a little bit confusing, but it's not that big of a deal. Now this part's going to be really shitty. Oh, hello. They were just sort of jumping up and down all around the place. Okay. Let's try backing up a bit seeing if there are any additional enemies around the place. I'm pretty sure that they're supposed to be, unless there was like a switch that opened up the door to a bunch of them. Oh, hang on. That should do the trick. I think I've triggered them all. Um, it's just a matter of wiping them all out with a flame wall. Uh, did that work? I do believe it did. Okay, sweet. Um, now that we have the gold key door, we can go back the way we came not have to worry about the uh if I, I guess if I went back through that room with the spin, the spin blades and switches I'd have to deal with more uh elevator shit not that I'm having to deal with it now not that I'm not having to deal with it now I should say which is good because you know you don't have to worry too much about the elevator music in this level I'm not going to complain too much about that so anyways, wiped out most of the life items here. Um, rip, you will be missed, I guess. Except we both know that that's obviously not happening. Okay, one side of the room has a wall, the other side of the room has this switch to move said wall. We have a healing basin, which actually makes sense, you know, for a dog to drink from that healing basin because it's a bowl of water, so it makes sense. So anyways, rinse these enemies, and then we have this sort of shtick, which you may have seen in Foggy Mountain. Except unlike Foggy Mountain, there is actually a trick to this. Uh, if you take the left one, it actually nets you a fireball. So I'm going to sit back and wait patiently for this dogmo to wear off. And then once it does, I will pick up the fireball and then end the level. Da -da 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 -da. But yeah, knowledge is definitely power in this. I did this a lot quicker than I did on the first attempt just because I kind of got lost. It took me like 15 minutes to get through this level, so... Thankfully, it only took me just under 10 to knock it over on this occasion, which I can be pretty content about. I mean, I could, probably could have been a bit more proactive and had another crack at it, but I was relatively happy with it. So, um, that will be it for this segment. We have a surprise for the next segment, which is, I guess, just all these enemies, which I'm just going to wait until they hit the turf here, and then just do that. Ugh, here we go. Die, die, thank you, so I can end the segment. I could easily just end the segment, but, oi! Are we about done now? Or have we got more enemies? Okay, I think we're right. Now we can end this segment. Next time, spring surprise, and I'm going to take a wild guess and say I'll be adding the last level into this next segment as well.